Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about experimental methods and we're going to be talking about the hypothesis and the null hypothesis. So make sure after completing this video, you want to be able to describe and differentiate between a research hypothesis and a null hypothesis. You want to be able to create a research question. Uh, you also want to be able to create a simple theory um, for a given research question. You want to be able to create a research hypothesis for a given theory and be able to create a null hypothesis for a given theory. So let's get started. And I'm sure you've heard of hypotheses, hypotheses testing, and null hypothesis before. Um, but pay, pay close attention because these are some questions that will certainly be on our um, test. And you'll also have to probably come up with a hypothesis and a null hypothesis um, in an FRQ, and we'll be practicing this tomorrow in class. So uh, in research, a hypothesis or a research hypothesis is a suggested explanation for a given problem. Now we're going to be a little bit more specific here and say basically a, a hypothesis is a testable set of expectations about how one variable affects another variable. And in this case, it's probably how the independent variable is going to affect the dependent variable. If you're not quite sure what those two things are, you want to stop here, go back to our previous video on independent dependent variables. You will not get credit for defining a hypothesis as an educated guess. Um, that's old school um, in AP Psych. Certainly we want to know that it's a testable set of expectations. And in order to do that, for a given theory, you're going to have to operationalize our variables. Again, that was in a previous video. Um, when you're creating a hypothesis and you're not quite sure how to word it, you can always go back to this statement. This is kind of what I say is my universal hypothesis statement, is if the IV happens, um, then this will happen to the DV. So it's kind of an if-then statement. Um, if we use Cornell notes uh, when observing our AP videos, then we will score higher. So if using Cornell notes is our IV, then we will score higher on the test. That's our DV, okay? Now, if you stop the video for a, a moment or two and think about the previous video, what would our hypothesis be for our breakfast question um, and the nutritious breakfast question? So think about that for a moment before you move on. The null hypothesis, maybe you haven't heard of. The null hypothesis is a specific statement that the researcher tries to disprove. So in a null hypothesis, typically what we normally would expect or what most people expect, or at least what um, we've seen before and it hasn't been disproved. So it's kind of the current view um, of some aspect of how variables um, affect each other. Null hypothesis is always assumed to be valid unless we can reject it or falsify it through our research. Now remember, it's very important that you don't use the terms prove or disprove. We want to replace those terms with support um, or fail to support. So we're not going to disprove anything in psychology. Um, and for our, our question from a previous video on the nutritious breakfast, our null hypothesis would be, you know, eating a nutritious breakfast will not have an effect on attention span during school. And that's generally the um, common sense view. Breakfast doesn't have any effect on how I do in school or how well I do in school. Now, our hypothesis, you could have guessed, is eating a nutritious breakfast um, will increase our test scores, or if we eat a nutritious breakfast, then we will have a better attention span during school. So basically the, the research question is um, the one we're trying to support and the null is the current belief that we're trying to disprove. So you want to be able to stop here. You also want to um, practice identifying the independent dependent variable in the breakfast question. You might also try to operationalize the variable. You remember what operationalizing means, so take a moment or two. We'll talk about that in class tomorrow.
Well, the teacher tests our hypothesis. So uh, the researcher, excuse me, in an experiment tests the hypothesis with an attempt to disprove the null hypothesis. And that would mean finding an answer to a specific research question, or at least coming closer to finding the truth about how variables affect each other. Remember, the research hypothesis is typically based on researcher observations that kind of trigger the suspicion that the null hypothesis may not be true. It's important to remember that when we don't reject the null, it doesn't mean we are accepting the null. Uh, the null hypothesis is going to be valid unless it's falsified by specific results, and we'll talk about how that happens a little bit later. And the experiment can either reject the null hypothesis if we find that the research hypothesis has support, um, or we can fail to reject the null. Now, if we fail to reject the null, we're not saying that it's true. We're just saying that we haven't found a difference yet. So stop the video and take a couple minutes to mentally complete the following. What is our research question about breakfast and school performance? So what would our question, I wonder question, what would our theory be? Remember, it's a general expectation based on observations. So we might have 100 observations, and we combine those observations into one simple statement. It's not yet testable because it's still descriptive and we haven't operationalized it yet. We haven't put it in, into a procedure yet. So a theory is just a, a general statement based on our observations. What would our hypothesis be? We should have already done that. What would our null hypothesis be? And before you go on to that, um, you want to take a moment or two um, to think about that for yourself. I'm going to have to go back here. I skipped ahead. But stop and um, take a look or think about it before you go on here. So here's the answers to our questions. You want to pause that and take a look at that. Uh, and our next step, once we come up with those statements, is to conduct some background research. Now, we have, we, we have our um, independent dependent variables operationalized. We've created our, we have our theory, we have our hypothesis and our null hypothesis. Um, now we have to conduct some background research. Um, and we may do this certainly um, and adjust our hypothesis as we do this, but we, we have to conduct some background research because we want to find out what other researchers already know about our topic, what has already been discovered and, and supported. And we want to find out what questions remain unanswered. Um, what can we learn about previous research? We can look at um, recent books on our topic. We can look at journal articles online databases. We can look at websites devoted to our topic to find out the, this information. So let's take some practice time here. Um, suppose you notice that students in class who greet the teacher as they come into the classroom get called on less in class. So create the following based on your observations, a research question, a theory, a hypothesis, and, and a null hypothesis. And you might want to throw in what is the independent dependent variable in our research as well. Be sure to operationalize those things, put them into a procedure description, and we will talk about this as we come into class tomorrow. Good luck. Rewind if you need to. Uh, remember, you should have your notes out. Uh, you should be supplementing this video with your note in your textbook. Good luck.